Hey guys, this is Ash, and you're watching Writer Gash. Happy February, everyone. So January has come to an end, and thankfully 2021 has been a better reading year already than 2020. 2020 was crappy on all ends. I've been rereading the Aquatar series in preparation for Silver Flames this month. I've also read some amazing books that are non aquatar related this month and I'm just gonna go in and give you my opinions on some of the books I've read and do a little wrap up for you. Let's start off with the first book I read this year. It, uh, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Freaking amazing. This book is a Romeo and Juliet retelling where both Romeo and Juliet are gangsters and it's just fucking amazing. They're from two rivaling gangs and they have a little history. And it's just we see them coming together, not trust each other, and just a great story. I don't want to get into it too much. I don't want to spoil it for you. There's a mystery that they have to solve together, and I love when characters have to do that. So freaking amazing. Definitely pick this book up. The next one I read this month was part of my little contemporary break. And it was Bohemian by Catherine Nolan. And this book is about, I believe, a model and a book store owner. It was basically, like, it was an okay read. I gave it a three star because it wasn't bad, but it wasn't that great. Contemporaries can be a hit or miss. Sometimes they just really hit you, but most of the time, they were three for me. It's a great break from the emotional high of the fantasies and mysteries that I read. But it's just that, a break, and I needed that between the two books i also like read the companion book to this landslide also a three star um also by katherine nolan it's about a makeup artist and a uh what bartender yeah and again an okay story great breezy read if you enjoy stories like that you should definitely pick it up it's um a fun read but it's just not the same intensity that every other book I've read this month has had. I feel like when you're reading a lot of great books the ones that are not to the same level feel a little washed out in all the greatness and I think partly these books face that. The next also was Catherine Nolan's book um, Strictly Professional. It was about a tar tattoo artist and a businessman. Another contemporary three star Fun while, it, fun, while it, fun while I read it, but not something that's going to mentally impact me for longer than a day. The next was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Mind-blowing. I gave it a 4.5 stars, though, because it took me a while to get into it. It took me quite a while. The first part of this book was hard for me to get into because it was set in a historical time and I'm not a history type of reader because of a lot of the things that happened with Adi early on but it was such an intense book by the time I finished reading it I was shaking physically with the way it impacted me Adi LaRue is just fucking amazing this story was amazing I did a book talk I'm gonna link it up in the cards and on in my description box so please read this book because it's amazing it's just if you want to have your soul ripped out, this is the book for you. Add, um, it's a little bit about this book. It is about a girl from 1700s France who makes a deal with the devil to be able to live her life. And she gets stuck with the short end of the stick with no one ever remembering who she is. And we just see her live with that and make a life out of it. And it's a fantastic book. Pick it up. You will not be disappointed. Finally, that brings me to my Aquatar rereads. I read A Court of Thorns and Roses this month, and it was hard to get back into the... I went into it with the mindset of never having read the series, which was super hard, because you have opinions and feelings about certain characters when you've read a series. But reading it, I tried to be unbiased, and I've, I did a book talk about it, also up in the cards, and... I have a book talk from like a few years ago on it too. I also have a non-spoilery book talk about it. It's about a girl who kills a wolf 
and then gets taken to fairy at, because of a treaty and she, it's a beauty and the beast retelling very loosely beauty and the beast retelling and it's just it is just the beginning of the story i feel like the story like opens up with the second book a lot of sergey mass's books are like that you have to get to the future books for it for the whole world to open up to you which brings me um and but i did give this book like a 4.5 stars or a 4 stars can't remember like when i i gave it a 4 stars um great book great experience uh and the reread just like you see different things when you're rereading it and this was just one of those experiences and i'm dying to read a Sil court of silver flames cuz the next book I read this month was A Court of Mist and Fury. It is the sequel to A Court of Thorns and Roses. Not much I can say. It is a Hades and Persephone retelling. I feel like this whole book is a Hades and Persephone retelling slash Beauty and the Beast retelling. Mm, interesting story. Great plot. Great characters. This book, again, the world opens up. You see different things. You get to meet all of these characters that you fall in love with. And just a wonderful experience. Finally, last night I worked overnight and I finished Court of Wings and Ruin. Just look at the amount of tabbing. I decided to give tabbing a shot because everyone on TikTok has been doing it. And oh my god. I really enjoy the way it looks, which is why I want to keep doing it. And the way it feels. This makes my books feel so amazing. Like I like having... The tabs there and also i can literally open up any one of them and it'll take me to a scene that was great this is i did this more with the purpose of helping me with book talks when i did the aquatar and aquamoth book talks i had like for aquatar i wrote like 20 pages of handwritten notes for aquamoth i literally took screenshots because i didn't want to take 20 pages of handwritten notes so with Aqua War, thankfully I have the physical copy for this one at least. So I have tabs. Which will make the book talk so much easier. It's not going to be short. And I haven't filmed it yet, so it's not linked up there. But I'll add it to the description box when it is ready. And I hope you guys read this book, read this series. And if you don't like Aquatar, don't give up. Please don't give up because the book gets better in Aquamoth. The story starts in Aquamoth. But you have to read Aquatar to get to Aquamath. That brings me to the end of this video. So I read eight books, and yes, three of them were rereads. But it has been an amazing reading month, and I can't wait to get started on A Court of Frost and Starlight. Cause that's the last book between Silver Flames and this. I don't know what I'm going to do in the 15 days more than that, because I pre-ordered the book and they ship on the 16th, which means I won't get it. Anyway, so while I figure out what to do with my February reading, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a great start to the new month. And you and I hope you have had an amazing reading month like I did. I'll see you guys later.